Okay, what we're working with for this one is section 2.1, transformations of quadratic functions. A quadratic function is a U-curve. So it's going to kind of look like a U. Another name for a quadratic function is a parabola. Some people like to say parabola. Um, and so we've actually learned all the rules for transformations. When you can learn the rules for absolute value graphs, it's the same, which is great. So vertex form is when you have a x minus h squared plus k. And you find the vertex by doing h comma k. That's what this is right here. That's the vertex. All right, so remember what happens when you have something inside the parentheses. When you have something inside the parentheses, it tells you to go either left or right. But remember, it's the opposite. Okay, so let's take a look at a graph. Okay, so there's the parent graph. If I put a minus in parentheses, it tells me to go to the right three. If I change it to a plus in parentheses, it tells me to go to the left three. So the number in parentheses shifts you left and right, but it's the opposite operation. Okay, the next thing is the k value, and the k value tells you to go up or down. And so let's look and see what that looks like. So x squared, if I have a plus 5, that's going to move the vertex up 5. And if I change it to a minus 5, it's going to move it down 5. So it's the same rules as absolute value. The h inside moves you left and right. The k on the outside moves you up and down. Okay, a. So a still does stretching and shrinking. So stretch is when the absolute value of it is greater than 1 and a shrink. And sometimes people call it a compression is less than 1. Okay, so let's actually look at this because this is the one that has, you have to make sure because absolute value, it was a slope and it was a line, so you kept counting that. For a quadratic, it's a little different. Okay, so the red one is the parent, and the blue one is this 3x squared, and then here's what 5x squared is. They keep getting a little closer. So there's two ways you could do this. You could plug in a value and find it, but what's nice is when you have a stretch, the parabola follows the pattern, okay? So I went from here, I went up 5, I'm sorry, up 3 over 1. And my point is at 1, 3. Let's click on it. And so it's 1, 3. I can't find the exact one. There it is. And so it's the same thing over there. So when you have a stretch, you should be able to follow that pattern. Let's see if that works for 5. And it does. It's up 5 over 1. Okay? So when you have a stretch, you can follow the pattern of up 5 over 1. Now, you cannot continue following it. Because if you continue following it, it makes a straight line, like an absolute value. So if you, did, if you continue to follow it, this is what it would have looked like. You see that? This purple line is if you continue to follow that up 5 over 1, which is straight. The parabola curves in and gets thinner. So that's why you can only use it the once. Okay, so let's see what happens with stretches, or um, shrinks, because shrinks is a little different. Turn that one off. Let's look at this one. So if I followed my rule for up one, my, that counting as my slope, I would go up 1 over 2, which is right here. And that's not correct. Let's see if another one works. Let's do up 1 over 5. So if I went up 1 over 5, I'd be way over here. So when you have a shrink, this rule of the slope working doesn't work. So we have to find out what to do. Let's go back to our notes. So... With a stretch, you can count rise over run for the A value once. It only works once. After that, it curves. 
Okay. Let's highlight that. That's an important comment. For a shrink or a compression, whatever word you use, for a shrink, you have to uh, plug in values. Plug in x values to find coordinate. And we'll do some of those so you can see. Okay? All right, so the negative a, well, a positive a goes up. If you have a negative a value, it turns it into a sad parabola, and it goes down. Okay, um, so this is a, this does the vertical flip. A negative in front inside the x is a horizontal flip. We will not do this one so much, so, but I do want you to see what happens with it. And the best way to look is at some graphs. So let's go back to our graphs. Okay, so I have everything on our thing ready to go. So here's the parent, the red. So let's see what happens when I just do a horizontal flip left to right with just a negative x squared. Nothing, right? If you look, I go from a red graph to the blue graph, it's the same thing. Okay, so now let's look at what happens when I have a shift. So let's say I have this function where I'm supposed to go to the left 5. Well, now watch what happens when I make it a horizontal flip. It's over to the right. So this is when you might see a difference. When it reflects over the y-axis. Um, but again, you will not see a bunch of these, so I'm not concerned with it. But I do want you to recognize if there's a negative in, inside with the x, that it's a horizontal flip. So it flips left to right. Okay, so now let's finally do some problems. And so we're going to graph and find the domain and range. Remember that the first number inside tells you left and right, and it's the opposite. And then the second number tells you to go up or down. So I'm supposed to go to the right 3 and down 4. And that is my vertex. So I go to the right 3, down 4. And now my a value, I don't see it, but it's 1. And so since it's the parent, I can do the up 1 over 1. Now, if you need to find one more point or you want to find one more point so that you can get an accurate curve, I'm going to find a point to the right of this point I just made here. So I'm going to plug in 5. So I'm going to take 5 and I'm going to plug it in. And so 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 squared minus 4 is a 0. So that tells me that the next coordinate I have is 5, 0. And so this one would also be in the same place because it reflects. You do not have to find a third coordinate for me. I'm okay if we just get the 2. When we get more technical, I will ask for more points. But for now, we could start off just with three points, the vertex, and one to the left and one to the right. Okay, so again, inside number tells you to go left or right. And this outside number that adds or subtracts tells you to go up or down. We don't have that number, so that means it's just negative 1, 0. Here's my A value. So it's down 2 over 1 because it is a stretch. So because it's a stretch, I could go ahead and just follow that pattern. Okay, over here... Um, I don't have anything in the parentheses. All I have is this going down. So I know my vertex is going to be at 0, 1. It doesn't go down. I mean, it goes, oh, it goes up. Sorry. Okay, so now this is a shrink. So when you have a shrink, I need to pick a point to the right or to the left. So you could pick the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It doesn't matter. Because I'm dividing by 3, I'm going to want something that's a multiple of 3 so I don't have to deal with decimals. So I'm going to say that x is 3. And so I'm going to plug in 1 one third times 3 squared plus 1. Well, 3 squared is 9, so 1 third times 9. Well, that's 3 plus 1, which is just 4. So my ordered pair is 3 comma 4. And so I'm going to go 3 comma 4, and it's the same thing on the other side, it's a reflection. 
And so there is my parabola, and that parabola is wider than the other ones we've been doing. Okay, uh, what we do have to do, because I forgot to do it the first time, is we need to figure out the domain and range. Remember, domain is how much you go to the left and right. It may not look like it, but these arrows are actually going to the left, and they will slowly get everywhere to the left and everywhere to the right, so it is all reals. The range, this one goes up, so it's y is greater than, and it goes up above this point right here, which for the y value is negative 4. All right, over here, uh, range, range, oh, sorry, I should start with domain. Domain is all reals because it does go left and right all the way. For the range, it's y, and it goes down, so y is less than, and again, it's the y value here, which is 0. And then lastly, number 3, uh, domain again is all reals, and the range it goes up and it goes above this point where y was 1. All right, what I'd like you to try now is I would like you to try to do these four problems. Uh, so this is different. We haven't described it yet. So describe the transformation. So that's left, right, up, down, flip. Then you're going to graph it. Um, and then you're going to do the domain and range. So when you think you have these, go ahead and press play. We'll do one at a time. Okay, so you should have said that it went to the right. Three. Down one. So that's a three comma one. And then my slope is one over one because there's nothing there. So there's my parabola. And my domain is all reals. In my range, y is greater than or equal to 1. For number 2, um, I don't go left or right any. This 1 half tells me it's a shrink. And then I go up 1. So I'm going to go up 1. And so my coordinates at 0, 1 for the vertex. Now, this is a shrink, so I have to actually do some math. So i got to pick a number to the right. I'm going to pick 2 because uh, a 2 will be divided by 2, okay. I don't want to deal with decimals. You can deal with decimals, but if you try and avoid them, it's nice sometimes. So 2 squared is 4, so I get 1 half of 4 plus 1, which is 3. So now the ordered pair that I'm plugging in is 2 comma 3, so 2, 3, and then I go over the same amount on the other one. Okay, so the domain, again, is all reals. The range for this one, it goes above 1. Okay. All right, number 3. This, this right here tells me to go left 1, up 3, and it's a stretch. So my vertex is at negative 1, 3. And it's a stretch of negative 2 over 1. Oh, I forgot to say that it's also a flip. So I'm going to do go down 2 over 1. And the domain is all reals again. And this time my graph goes down, so it's less than. And it goes down from this value of y, which is 3. Change colors one more time. Okay, so minus 3 in parentheses tells you to go right 3. Down 6. And then that 4 tells me it's a stretch. So right 3, down 6 is 3, negative 6. And then I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. And again, that pattern only works for stretches. For shrinks, we're going to have to do some math. Okay? All right, so remember, inside the parentheses tells you left or right. The number outside that's added or subtracted is your vertical shift. And the number in front, the multiplier, tells you the direction and the steepness of it.